Praise be to God. Hello children. Welcome back to Catechism class. Let's pray. Oh God, we love you and we praise you. We thank you Lord for helping us to know you more and to love you more. We want to serve you and build the kingdom of God. Amen. Yes, children, I hope you all remember what we were learning. We were learning about kingdom of God in the parables, lesson 7. And in the first part, we learned what the parables are and the aims of the parables. And in part 2, we saw God's kingdom through parables. Today, we are going to see it in detail. Like, we are going to see different types of parables. Today, we are going to see seven different types of parables. Now, in your text, you can see in three columns it is given. And the first, you can see the type of the parable. And in the second column, you can see the parable which is explained. And in the third column, it's a homework which tells you to find the chapter and the verses of the parables. And here it is done for you. Okay. So the first parable of the sower. What is the message that you get from it? What does it convey? The parable of the sower tells us about the beginning of God's kingdom. Beginning of God's kingdom. And the second type of parable that is like the parable of seed, mustard seed and the parable of living tells us about the growth of God's kingdom. It tells us about the growth of God's kingdom. And in t uh, type 3, you can see the mercy of God's kingdom. You all know the parable of the prodigal son. So, it shows the unconditional love of God and the mercy of God. And also in the parables of the labors of the vineyard, Pharisees and the tax collector and the two debtors also you can see the mercy of God's kingdom. Here in the fourth type of parable, it tells us about the opposites of God's kingdom. Mainly in the parables of unfaithful servant and the rich man and the Lazarus, you can see the opposites of God's kingdom. And what is type 5? It tells us about the invitees in God's kingdom. Are you invited to the kingdom of God? That we can see in the parables of the wedding feast talents and the laborers at the vineyard. Type 6 parable tells us about the members of God's kingdom. Let's see which are the parables that tell us about the members of God's kingdom. They are parable of justice and jewel, house builders, unforgiving servant, building tower and king going on war, the judge and the widow, good Samaritan, the foolish wealthy man, and the fruitless fig tree. These are the parables that tell us more about the members of God's kingdom. Now we have the last type of the parable. That's the seventh type. It tells us about the completeness of God's kingdom. Which are the parables that tell us about the completeness of God's kingdom? Yes, they are the parable of weeds and the net thrown in sea. Okay? Now, watch a video. This will tell you more about the parables. Jesus of Nazareth was a master teacher, and some of his most well-known teachings are told in short stories called parables. Yeah, like the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who was looking for pearls, and when he found the ultimate pearl, he sold everything so that he could buy it. Must have been some 
Pretty amazing pearl. Or the kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed that a farmer planted in his garden. It grew and became a huge tree and birds came to perch in its branches. And that's a beautiful image, but what does it mean? Exactly. Jesus didn't tell parables to make everything clear. Rather, he wanted to provoke the imagination and invite people to see what God is doing in the world from a new perspective. So let's talk about how to read the parables of Jesus. Now, there's many great teachers that throughout history have used stories to teach students about morality, religion, philosophy. But Jesus didn't use his parables to teach abstract religious or moral ideals. He said that his parables were about himself and his mission. His mission, which was to announce that the kingdom of God was arriving on earth as it is in heaven. Right. So, in Jesus' day, the Israelites were ruled by the Roman Empire. But their scriptures promised that one day their God would come to rule his people as king. And so many Israelites wanted to revolt against Rome and fight for their freedom. And this is what some people thought of as the kingdom of God. Exactly. But Jesus was a poor traveling prophet, healing the sick, inviting people to follow him. And he said that this was the arrival of God's kingdom. And that didn't fit people's expectations. Right. And so Jesus used some parables to help people imagine that his small movement was the arrival of God's kingdom. Oh yeah, like the parable that the kingdom of God is yeast hidden in a lump of dough. And you might not see its influence, but it's gonna change everything. Jesus also told parables about the upside down values of God's kingdom, about how the least important people in the world are actually the most important people to God, especially those who are poor and of low status. Yeah, like the parable about the business owner who hired workers throughout the day, in the morning, later in the day, and even towards the end of the day. And when it was time to pay everyone, he paid them all the same wage. Right, Jesus is showing how money and status are irrelevant to God, who offers his generous mercy to everybody. Now, not all of the parables have happy endings. Some are really intense. Yes, Jesus stood in the tradition of Israel's prophets, who also told parables to criticize Israel's leaders because they mistook their kingdom for God's. So Jesus warned the leaders of his day, if they don't accept his offer of God's kingdom, they're headed for destruction. Yeah, like the parable of the landowner who built a wonderful vineyard and he expects it to produce fruit. Yes, Jesus gets this parable from the prophet Isaiah, but then he adapts it. Right, and so the landowner appoints managers to take care of this vineyard. And at harvest, he sends servants to collect the fruit but those managers kill the servants. And so the landowner sends his own son to confront the managers and they kill him too. And so Jesus asked the people around him, what do you all think this landowner should do? Oh, he's gonna punish those managers and hire new ones. Jesus knew that if Israel kept on their current path, they would be destroyed by Rome. And so in parables like this, he's forcing people to make a decision about his offer of God's kingdom. Are people going to reject him, ignore him, or trust and follow him? Now, if this message of God's kingdom is so important, why cloak it in parables? Why not be more clear? Well, through riddles and parables, Jesus could make really bold claims that revealed truth to people who were open-minded. For those who have ears to hear, they could ponder it and go deeper. But the parables would also conceal his message from those who were against him so that he could buy more time. Buy time for what? Well, Jesus was preparing his closest followers for the greatest surprise yet. Jesus claimed that Israel's God was coming to rule over his people not through coercion or violent force, but through self-giving love as he was going to die for their sins. But his death wasn't the end. Right. He said that his death would be like a tiny seed buried in the ground, but then it would grow and produce a crop with many seeds. So these parables, they explain who Jesus was and what he was up to. And the gospel authors have preserved these parables so that now every generation of Jesus' followers can read and ponder them. And imagine how God's kingdom is still at work even today. Right. These ancient parables are still full of new surprises and challenges. They're like a storehouse packed with treasures, some that are new, some that are old, and it's all just waiting to be discovered.
I hope you understood what are the different types of parables now. Okay, keep in mind uh, when you read a parable, you must understand how it has been compared, compared with the situation or the background of the people on those days. Okay, every parable said by Jesus contains great lesson. That is the most important thing. We should read them and learn lessons from them to lead a good life that will lead us to the kingdom of God. Okay? You understood? The parables are beautiful stories which can tell which you can tell your friends and young children, your young brothers and sisters. Okay. You should learn these holy verses and Try to read it again and again. Then only you will be able to understand the deeper meaning of it. Okay. Be a part of the kingdom of God. We are all working together to build the kingdom of God. And keep in mind righteousness, peace and joy. That's the kingdom of God. Okay. God bless you all. So until we meet again in the next class, praise be to God. Thank you very much.